What's going on, guys? Back. Um, finally, Earl Spence and Sean Porter um, had their official press conference um, earlier this week. Um, you know, Sean Porter tried to bring up the energy um, for the for the crowd. I think it was just really hot. I think it was like 100 degrees, something over there. Um, so, he, you know, he tried to do his best to, you know, energize everybody, be the energizer bunny of the of the people. Um, I like Sean Porter. You know, he's a good fighter. He's tough. He's strong. Um, I think amongst welterweights, in terms of fighting welterweights, I think he has the best resume. Not talking overall. Um, I think Danny Garcia has the best overall resume. But in terms of fighting welterweights at their prime, stuff like that, Sean Porter got the best resume. Um, you know, he beat Devin Alexander to claim the belt. He um, beat Pauly Malignaggi when he was still fighting and still solid. Um, then he lost to Kell Brook in his prime. I think he lost in the Stub Hub, Carson, Carson, California. That was a good scrap. Um, then he beat Broner. You know, he, he outworked Broner. He, you know, he out-hustled Porter. Or out-hustled. Ugh, can't talk. Out-hustled Broner. Um... Then he had a you know a war with Keith Thurman you know my fight of the year in 2016 um, versus Keith Thurman I thought it was a great fight it was a classic always felt they should have rematched before um, Keith Thurman unified with Danny Garcia I still hold by that um, then he beat uh, Andre Berto who was a former champ or two time champ excuse me he fought. Uh, that was in 20, no, he fought Burrow in 2017. He fought Granados on a Wilder. I think it was Wilder uh, Stavern 2 rematch undercard where he hurt his hand. And then he uh, beat Danny Garcia. And then he beat, or questionably beat, you know, Dennis Ugas in, uh, what was it, March, April? When he fought Ugas. Um, easily could have been a draw. Maybe even Ugas should have got the nod. Um, but, you know, that pressure was definitely there for Porter to fight Earl Spence next. One, because he said he would fight Earl. He said Earl was the easiest fight to make after beating Danny Garcia. And then you fight Ugas. So that wasn't a good look. Um, but I, you know, I kind of understand it. You know, Sean just got the, you know, a belt again after not having it since like 2014. And immediately be thrown into a, you know, a dog unification with Earl um, it's just you know that's why you gotta be careful what you say because if you say it in front of a live audience like Earl's the easiest make the fight to make and then you don't do it <laughs> it's not a good look um, especially when there's always kind of that um, stigma that everyone's ducking Earl except for Terrence Crawford um, and even Terrence Crawford has said on um, I think he said it on his uh, live Instagram that uh, he doesn't think Earl's ducking him. I don't think Bob has said that he thinks Earl's ducking him. Um, Earl's the only welterweight that's been openly willing talking about Terrence Crawford, so I don't see how he's ducking him. He's just, you know, using up his options on his quote-unquote side of the street. You know, and top rank will be doing the same thing, and pretty much everyone <laughs> has done the same thing. Uh, I don't knock it, you know. He has the bigger... Bigger stars on his side, so he can build up his pos his popularity. He can get more belts, and you know when that time does come for those two to fight, you know he's positioning himself to be the A side and the bigger star. He'll have more belts and he'll be the bigger brand. So I don't knock I don't knock the move. It's common sense, really. Uh, but in terms of the f of the fight day, it's on September twenty eighth. Fox pay per view. Great card. Um, I think Fox has done a great job um, in terms of pay-per-view and the cards. Um, the one with Keith Thurman and Pacquiao, I thought that was a great card. This card might even be better. Um, you got Robert Guerrero coming back in front of the Staples Center fan base. Um, you got Josito Lopez versus John Molina Jr. And I think I think that's why John Molina pulled out of the Lepinus fight, um, to put him on this fight. Because I think... I think Molina Jr.'s from California. I'm pretty sure he is. And so, and Lopez, he's from Riverside. So, um, to have that fight in L.A., that's just, 
come on, that's a given. Um, but that's going to be a war. You got Mario Barrios, um, young fighter at uh, 140, real big and tall for the division. I think he's fighting for a version of that WBA belt because Pro Gray, I think he'll be elevated to a super champ um, so he can unify with Josh Taylor. And I'll make a video about that. Great news about that. Um, so good for Mario Barrios, you know, getting a world title shot. Um, and I think he's ready. I think that's what they said um, last year, that end of 2019, they would get a, um, a title shot. So they stayed true to the word. But he's a good fighter, you know, young, strong, box a little bit, got a nice inside fight game. Still a little bit green. He hasn't really fought too many big names yet, but the talent's there. So just got to keep growing, see where he goes. But um, the co-main event, which... Easily could be a main event between uh, David Benavidez and Anthony Durrell. Um, that one might steal the show of the card, to be honest. Um, I think even Earl said on the press conference that Durrell and um, Benavidez could be its own main event. I agree. Um, I, I, In fact, I think it will steal the show of the fight, to be honest with you. Um, I think it's going to be pretty similar to Maurice Hooker versus... Uh, Carlos Ramirez. Um, David actually can box a little bit better than uh, Carlos Ramirez can. Um, I think Anthony Durrell, like Maurice Hooker, really talented. He can punch. Um, he can box, but he's not, like Maurice Hooker, he's not a polished boxer. Like, he, he has the, the boxing... Uh, style concept like you know he's he's aggressive he boxes well in the front foot stuff like that it's just not always sharp i guess like it's not it, like he got out boxed by badu jack you know if you haven't seen it watch it it's actually not bad though if you're a badu jack fan because badu jack beat him pretty well um that's one thing about anthony durrell he hasn't had a lot of big fights you know he had the sake obika fights two of them he fought Badu Jack. He lost that one, clearly. Um, but he hasn't had a lot of big fights, really. So he's he's kind of, I don't want to say unproven, but him and his brother, they kind of had a, uh, for as talented as they are, they kind of had an underwhelming career. Um, so this would be the, I would say this would be the biggest win in Durrell's resume if he can upset David Benavidez. And I think he is opening as the underdog. Um, I got Benavidez winning that one. Um, I'll say probably late stoppage, maybe a competitive... It'll be a competitive decision for sure. A competitive fight for sure. I just don't know if it's going 12. I think either guy could get knocked out. Um, I think it's a sleeper fight of the year. Um... I, their, their styles to me gel better than Sean and Earl's to be honest so I think Benavidez versus Darrell's a really good fight Benavidez looked great versus J. Leon Love um, fighting that slick boxer style and he you know ran through him like a mad truck so um, Benavidez is good really good um, young you know he made a mistake got caught on that sugar daddy um, that's why he lost his belt in the first place. And then Darrell fought for the vacant WBC. So now, you know, it's kind of David's chance to get his belt back. Um, so it's, it's a good fight, though. It's Like I said, that's, that's a sleeper. But actually to the main event, um, <laughs> Earl versus Sean. Um, I think Roy Jones said on a, I want to say a Fight Hype or Fight Hub interview, uh, probably like a month ago or so, um, saying that this is Earl's kind of first real test and people gave Roy Jones some pushback I actually under I, I kind of get where um, Roy Jones is coming from I don't think he's downplaying Earl's fight versus Kel Brook but Kel Brook was coming off a loss he was coming down in weight so that kind of helped Earl out a little bit you know like I get that was his like massive you know step up in terms of competition you know, not that Algeria's a bad fighter, Bundy's a bad fighter, but, you know, Kel Brooks, Kel Brooks is a good fighter. Um, but like I said, he was coming down in weight, you know, after that suicide, career suicide move, fighting Triple G. That was stupid. You know, no one told Kel Brooks to do that. We just wanted him to fight 
better opposition than JoJo Dan and Kevin Bezier. Um, you know, because after he beat Sean Porter, he really didn't fight anybody, you know, in terms of relevant welterweights. So that was a bad move. But, and, you know, it, you know, kudos to Earl for bouncing back after a slow start versus Kell Brook. But like I said, Kell Brook was coming down in weight and he was coming off a loss. Um, you know, where the corner had to step in. You know, Lamont Peterson, that's a good win. He's a good fighter. But Lamont's had some wars on him. You know, he's had some wars on him. Um, good win, great performance, but, you know, he had some wars on him. Mikey Garcia, excellent fighter, pound-for-pound pound talent, but he was moving up in weight. Um, so there's that. So now with Sean Porter, a fight who's been tried, tested, proven as a welterweight champ twice over. Um, and like I said, I think Sean has the best welterweight resume in terms of welterweights that he's fought against. Um you know, I think Roy Jones does have a point in saying that this is kind of Earl's real first test, facing a legitimate welterweight with a legitimate welterweight resume. And it's tough. You know, Sean Porter, I, no one's beating Sean easy. <laughs> you know, Kel, I think he was the right winner when he beat Sean. I think he won majority. Um, Keith Thurman, I thought he was the right winner, but it was close. Um, no doubt about that. You know, uh, Sean... You know, he beat Danny Garcia. He eked it with Ugas a little bit. But, you know, Ugas is a good fighter. Um, you know, he, he roughed up Birdo. You know, he out-hustled Broner. So, uh, you know, he ran through Pauly Malignaggi. He beat the snot of Devin Alexander. So, you know, Sean's a clearly good fighter. Clearly got a chin. Always in great shape. He's tough. He's rugged. He's athletic. He's not a bad body puncher. His last couple of fights, he's been trying to show that he can box a little bit. I don't think he should try to box in this fight. I think he should try to overwhelm and um, push Earl to an uncomfortable pace um, and actually go to his body, you know, make the body puncher eat body shots. So if Earl Spitz can either um, dominate Sean, be the first to dominate him like he did Mikey, or be the first to stop him, or, you know, some combination of the two, I'll be impressed. You know, I think Earl's going to win a decision versus Sean, but if he can stop him or even dominate him, I'll be impressed if he's able to pull that off. But I think it's going to be a very competitive fight. I think it'll be really good. I think both fighters are going to be tested. Um, I think kind of a battle with body snatchers type of fight. So it's a good scrap. Um, very good card. Um, the Fox pay-per-view cards have been really, really good this year. Um, that's really what pay-per-view should be. You know, if you're going to charge the fans money, at least make it worth their while with, you know, three, four good fights. So, and that's what they've done. So I got no complaints here. September 28th, Fox pay-per-view unification, vacant world title fight and, uh, title defense on it. And just a good scrap, you know, with Lopez and John Molina Jr. That'll be a war. Um, like I said, Durrell and Benavidez, they might end up stealing the show of the fight. I think the actual co -main, uh, the actual main event will be really good as well. So, excellent card. Staples Center. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the card, the fights, who you think is going to win, how do you think they're going to look. Drop comments, like, subscribe, stay tuned, share the video. You guys take it easy.